Hey guys, it is Stephanie. How are you? Happy Monday. We're going to be making a teardrop swag. Look at what colors I have. We're going to be working with this hot mess, but when you get a teardrop swag, this is what you get. It's all smushed for better packing, right? Um, there we go. So I'm just going to unwind this and I'm going to start out with a bow, but I wanted to hang out with you guys. I have not done a teardrop <clears throat> in so long. I swear I probably have forgotten how to do one. <clears throat> I did one during the holiday season. Let me know in the comments, have you ever done a teardrop swag? This guy out and then we're going to make a bow and we're going to assemble. I have all kinds of glitter and fun over here on the table. I don't know if y'all can see it. But I will give you a good close-up view here shortly. <clears throat> and we're going to make a bow. I'm going to be using, of course, some traditional Mardi Gras ribbon. But also some non-traditional ribbon in this as well. So let's switch over here. And so a traditional Mardi Gras ribbon there. There's one. Here is one that's fun, and I love this because it's got the solid color. So mixing in these solids in here, I have um, this really glittered ribbon in the purple and gold. So those will go well in here. So if you don't have the traditional, and I keep saying traditional, the purple, the gold, the greens in a mixture ribbon you can always use solids and still come out with the same effect and then this roll doesn't have a whole lot on it so I have a special plan for it all right so let's get started I brought out several ribbons because I wasn't sure which ones are I was gonna use I'm gonna wing it I'm gonna wing it so I'm gonna bring out the easy bow maker and let's see okay make sure I'm in your view and let me get some wire over here. All right, so for this bow, I'm just going to be making a single loop on each side. So I'm just going to make my tail, about an eight inch tail, and I'm going to do about a six inch loop. Let me just set these over here so they're not, they don't keep rolling in my face here. But with this one, I'm going to face the tail this way. I'm going to do my loops and I'm going to face them opposite directions. So I have a loop, loop, tail, and now we'll have another tail. So I'm actually going to repeat this process but each time I'm going to come in just a little bit on my, on my loop. So this loop is just a little bit shorter than that loop. Not a whole lot. And I'm going to position my ribbon. Look at that sparkle. Oh my gosh. Hey.
for being helpful there. All right, so this last one, I'm just going to do a little center loop and a tail. So I just did a little center loop and a tail, and then I will move that tail here shortly. All right, so now I have all this blingy bow, and I'll fluff him a little bit more when I get him on the swag. But remember at the beginning, I said I was going to use this ribbon with the Mardi Gras writing on it. So I'm going to cut this the opposite. Well, actually, I don't even need that. And we're going to make some tails. We're going to add some tails to this. So I'm going to measure out, um, and that looks pretty good, right about there. And I'm going to want two of these. And I'm going to go there. So I'm going to bring these two. And we're going to add these on behind our bow. So I'm going to add, I'm going to layer some more on here. Let me see how much is left on this roll. Whoops, did I just hit that camera? Definitely for one strip. I'm probably going to have to open a second roll for this one. And because of how that turned out in my bow, <clears throat> I think I'm going to use some of that purple in here as well. Because that purple really popped. And one more. And of course, I can add on more later if I want. But this will be... A good baseline so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to gather three of these ribbons I'm gonna kind of pinch them together and this now will become part of my ribbon tails I'm gonna do the same thing with the other set And I don't even care there's a fold there because it's going to be hidden on the back of my bow. So now I've got my two sets of ribbon tails. Let's bring our bow back out here. And take our wires and add that to the back of that bow. So this is actually going to do a couple of different things. Not only is it going to add some extremely wonderful tails on here, but you see how that's kind of gathered up and um, real thick right in there. I want the depth. I want the deep because when we go to add it to our swag, it'll help keep it from getting sucked into the swag. Wow. Check it out. We'll get that all fluffed up. Almost looks like a party dress going on there. All right, we have our bow. Let's set that aside and let's bring our swag back out. All right, actually, before we bring the swag out, we're going to cut some of this mesh. So I'm going to use this 10 and a half inch mesh and we are going to add 
some 36 inch strips. So I'm going to start with, I need a bigger table. I'll have to requisition that. All right, 36 inches, about, <clears throat> about maybe 35, maybe 37. Hi, <laughs> Rose, it was. She was having a blast with that mesh. All right, so with our mesh, I'm going to curl in. So you notice how it's curling towards itself. I'm going to curl in one end. And then I'm going to come down to the opposite end and curl it in. And then we're going to just ruffle it together. So do the little cruffle or scruffle or woodland ruffle or however you call it. Different people call it different things. And we're going to make a giant ruffle. The only difference is, is that the ends are curled in and that's to help reduce some of the fraying. All right. So for this, this is strategic. So what I'm doing is I'm going to find the spot where I want to add my bow and I want a ruffle underneath there. Because remember, I said I don't want my bow getting sucked into my um, teardrop. So this kind of elevates it even more by adding the mesh in there. So that is the purpose of that first piece of why I'm placing it there. The other two pieces extremely long, the 36 inch long pieces are going to be used to give me the illusion of more width at the top. So remember, this is a teardrop, right? So I want it to be in a teardrop shape when I get done with it. So I kind of accentuate the top of the teardrop with the illusion of making it look wider than what it really is. So I'm going to add a couple of these on each side. See how it already made it wider over here? And we're going to do the same thing over here. Jacksonville, Florida. And another one. And do just one more on the opposite side. Holy cow. I could use a clip, but why, why make things convenient? All right, so now we're going to add that on the opposite side over here. And I'm just using the um, branches on the wreath frame on the teardrop swag as my twist ties. Now look how much wider that is at the top. <coughs> now, so moving forward, I'm going to now taper down towards the, the teardrop, but we're going to be adding more of the um, mesh for that. But I don't need 36 inches. I wanted it super full, super full towards the top. So these are going to be about 20 to 25 inches long. Let me see if I can... Nope. My camera is being really wonky. I need something heavy to set on it. I know just the thing. It ain't going nowhere. Oh. Okay. Hopefully. Hopefully it'll sit still now. If it starts leaning, it really needs to be... I'm going to cut it at about 25 inches. And I'm going to guess because it's not like you're working with a wreath frame where you know exactly how many um, twist ties are on the wreath frame. I'm going to do one, two, four, five, six, about six of these. And I can always come back and add more if I need to. All right, we'll set that aside. And 
again, I'm let me go ahead and grab a clip so I'm not fighting this. Curl in the edges and then ruffle it together. Let's bring this one back. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to go more centralized with this one. Center of my teardrop. And keep it more centralized as I go down. All right, so no pers no particular strategy. I'm just kind of filling in, but keeping that teardrop shape. See how much um, it looks, what it looks like already with all the little bling in there? Oh, it's something. So it's going to be a matter of preference on how much mesh if you want to add to a swag. And of course, not every swag has mesh, but this one is. This one is definitely getting some mesh. And I may not need that last piece, so we'll see. You know, a lot of women, a lot of crafters use clothespins. No, not me. I use some kind of clamps that I bought at, um, where did I get this? I got them in a truck stop. Y'all, craft supplies can be everywhere. Trust me. Truck stops included. Yeah, I think that will be enough mesh. I, I don't get it. Okay, since I do have actually um, another piece of mesh here, I actually might stick it again right in top of here where our bow is going to go. So rather than it go to waste... I added that last piece there, which gave me some more lift. Now watch what happens when we take our bow and we're going to add that to our swag here. So let me run that wire down there. Let me see if I can zoom out just a little bit. Uh, not much, but there's a little. And there we go. There we go. Let's go back to the close-up. Y'all don't want to see me. You want to see what the heck I'm doing. The fun part is now feeding that wire down through the mesh. So one, one big tip that nobody taught me when I started making wreaths and things is I used to push the mesh out of my way so I could get the wire through the mesh or, you know, through the frame to get around the frame. However, that was one of the biggest mistakes I made because then when I got done, those, it would create gaps in my mesh. And I would look at it and go, what happened to my nice full, you know, frame, my full base. And it's because I was pushing that mesh out of the way. So rather than push the mesh out of the way, struggle through it and push that wire down in between the holes on the mesh. Leave the mesh there.
All right, I got one side. Let's work on the other one. Tightening this down, I don't want to pull my bow and down close to the wire base because then it'll get sucked in. We want the bow to kind of float on top. Let me see. I want to tighten that up just a smidge more. Okay. Now we are in a position where we can kind of um, fix the ribbon, lay the ribbon out where we want it to be. And now our tails are going to start to come into play. So right now, this is a 24 inch wreath ba or a teardrop base. And, you know, of course it comes with a little loop on it to, to hang it. But when you stretch out the stems or the branches on the, va on the teardrop, and then by the time you add dimension, so I made it wider by adding the big poofy mesh at the top, and then I made it longer. You're at, we'll actually be making it a little bit longer yet, but this is only a 24 inch um, teardrop swag. And it's going to look like it's a grande. Grande. All right. So before I actually play and position these, I'm going to wind my tails up and I'm going to get them out of my way because we're going to add some of those picks and balls, you name it, they're going to go in here as well. Remember in Mardi Gras, bling is good. Bling is very good. One thing that we don't think about sometimes is just because it's labeled Christmas doesn't mean it's Christmas. This is called champagne. But look how this looks next to all the other colors going on in our Mardi Gras swag. So I brought out some champagne um, glittered stems, some Mardi Gras stems. But I want to point out, this is, this is a funny, my worker came to me today, Heather came to me today, and she said, Stephanie, they only had one job to do. Do you see what they did? This came from the manufacturer like that. So we took it, obviously, off the website. You know, we took this one out of inventory. I'm going to use it because that's, uh, it's not that big of a deal, but it's supposed to look like this. Pink is not a Mardi Gras color. Y'all, they only had one job to do. Donna, you are never late in my house, girl. So just to remedy that, I'm going to take that pink one off. Y'all, I can't even. Cut that off. And actually, that one's secured on there pretty good. So I, I'm going to be able to leave that one on there. If not, I could put a spot of hot glue on top of there, but it's pretty secure on there. I just thought you guys would find that a little humorous, right? Hey, Brandy, how are you? So I brought out several picks along with this um, champagne glittered stem from the holidays. And we're going to add some bling. So let's go back. And get a couple of these cut down. All right, so in order to start adding some bling, I kind of visualize where I want to put everything. And again, keeping with the, I want the top of the teardrop swag to be wider than the bottom of it. 
So if I'm going to add any width, it's going to be at the top. And that's what I'm going to use these um, stems for. I, oh no, Brandy! on it. I hope you don't end up with it. You know, it's funny because it's it's funny on who all it affects and doesn't affect. It's just weird as heck. But I'm starting to believe my husband who says, I think we're all going to end up with it. He may be right. We may all end up with it at one point or another. I just wish it was one of those things where you could only get it once, right? But no such luck. All right, so see how I've added that at the top? But I am going to add, my glue was a little hot, so I need to, I'm cooling it down. There we go. When you start using glue, you want to actually wiggle it around and have it touch as many places as you possibly can so that it has a good adhesion, something great to grab onto. And of course, I want to keep track of my center loop. To go up underneath and again, um, Try to think about where my placement's going to be. If I'm not sure about placement, I'll lay it out. I'm not going to glue anything down. I will lay it out on my object and kind of determine from there. This one, I think I want to keep all in one piece. And I'm going to cut it shorter. But I think this is going to look really good underneath that bow. I won't know when he's really well. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, knowing him, knowing knowing the the species. They're like, no, no, I'm still sick. I think I'm still running a fever. You better, you better leave me in here a little bit longer. I love it. I love it. Okay. Spread it all out. Yes. Okay. This one, I feel like is going to go right below that one. I'm not, I'm not sure I'm absolutely loving this one down there. And that's one of the reasons I like to... Now, I do like that better, where it's not sticking out so far. I do like that much better. Hey, Miss Kelly. Happy Monday! Did any of you guys get snow over the weekend? Are you in any of those snowbound areas? I'm not loving that. Okay, I think I found my happy place. In fact, I know I did. Okay, I like the placement. So I'm now that I figured out where I want to place them, I'm going to go back and I'm going to glue these down. So not only am I going to use that glue, but I also am going to take some of the um, ties and I'm going to kind of secure it a little bit more. I 
I can find one the opposite side. There we go. And I'm going to give that a couple of twists. So it's glued in there. Plus I use the um, branches on the evergreen to twist around it as well. So it's got a double, double security. Now let's take this one. Do the same thing and I do want to slather on a lot of glue get him in there twist it around let that glue touch as many places as possible and I can manipulate that mesh look at that all right let's let's get this bad boy in there and he's going to go right about there and there. Okay. I want to make sure I had access to a couple twist ties. Slather on some glue. Work it around and twist it in there. All right. Thanks for the love, you guys. I appreciate it. All right, I'm going to get some picture of this of this guy and I will post some pictures tomorrow of the finished design after I I need to get these listed on Etsy. I'm just being a slacker, that's all. Hey guys, thanks for hanging out with me tonight. Have